Hey, everybody. Welcome to Life is a Gamble. This is episode 12, and my guest today is Joseph Mirhi. Uh, Joseph has produced over 100 movies. He's directed over 30. He's written over 20, uh, also been involved in television, and a uh, longtime uh, friend. So, Joe, uh, welcome to Life is a Gamble. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Munch. Great seeing you again. You're one, one of my oldest friends, one of my kindest friends. We, we hang out a lot together. We wrote a few scripts together and we made movies together. So we go way, way back. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, I want to get to that, but I really want to start at the beginning, which is you're from a small town in Syria and you moved to the States. How old were you when you moved to the States? I was 18, maybe 18 and a half. It was in 1972. I was born in 1973. I mean, 53. So in 72, when I was 18, 18 and a half years old, I think, I finished high school and, uh, yeah, came to the States. And what was your plan? What was the, what was, yeah, what was the plan? You know, you know, Munch, every single person I'm realizing, and I seriously, you know, between, I'm, I turned 70 years old. So between 65 and 70, you start reflecting on everything. You start reflecting on, you know, you know, like I grew up thinking my dad is an idiot. You know, then by the time I'm 40, 45, I'm thinking my dad, the best, he did the best he could. I, you know, I was lucky enough to see him and then talk to him and then, then, what, who made me what I am, I start thinking, you know what, it's my dad also, his influence, although he, he really is an illiterate, he couldn't read or write, but he has this, this adventurous uh, sense of, I'm going to do something good in my life. And he, he never went anywhere. He was, you know, he was, he was, he fixed shoes and, and he repaired shoes and we are you know, we were, uh, not poor, but a little bit above poor, not a middle class either. So, 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 so my father influenced me. And even looking back, my father knew five jokes and every client who would come in to fix his shoes or shine his shoes or do something, he will tell his five jokes. And it was painful for me to hear over <laughs> and over and over and over again every, every day for years. But he has a zest, a zest for life. And if it wasn't for him, I start thinking, you know, he gave me all the money he has for a dream that he, he, he's never been out of homes for more than maybe a hundred kilometers or something to send me to the U S so, but it all starts again, just thinking and reflecting it. There's like God, whatever he is, she is, whatever religion kind of send you somebody and guide you. And you don't, you don't really see it. You don't know it. You don't recognize it. Unfortunately, for another 10, 15, 20, 30 years later. And that person who God sent to me was, was a painter, not house painting. He was an artist, actually. And when I used to go and get to my father his supplies from the, from the souk, I was like 8, 10 years old. I would walk by this guy, and this guy was painting on a canvas. And, you know, I'm a kid curious. I start stand there and just watched him. And he was kind. He said hello to me. And finally, every time I go back and forth, I'll, I'll, I'll see the progress of that canvas the next day. And I was, I was really touched and see how beautiful this guy painted. And he just sat there, smoke his cigarette outside in, on, on, on the sidewalk and just paint. And finally I stood there one time watching. He goes here, he gave me the brush and he goes, put some colors on, on this tree. And, and, and I didn't want to do that. He said, do it. Just see, you know, just, I'm going to go inside and get some water and sit down here and start painting. So I sat and, and started, I was afraid to mess it up and put some colors. It came back and encouraged me. Wow, you're an artist. You're really good. You know, who's your family? So he tells me. And then I, to, I told him, who's, you know, where my dad's shop is. So a few days later, he asked me again to, to paint, and I, I started looking forward to it and stopped for a second. And then, uh, then he took me by the hand, went to my dad, and he goes, listen, he said, this kid is talented. He should, 
you should put them in an art class. There's a summer art class. You should put them in there. And my dad said, okay, okay, no, no. And then he said, and then he said, is it the money? Because at the time, probably cost a dollar to, to, to go in. And, 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 and that, uh, he said, no, I don't want him to go. He said, if I pay for him and I take him and register, him, will you please let him go wow. to the art club? He did. And he did that. He took me, he paid for me. He, you know, and he was, he was asking me, what did they teach us? What, uh, show me some of the paint, the, the drawing, it was a pencil and shadow class. So only with pencil, no colors. And I showed him what I drew and he goes, you, you're fantastic, man. He said, you have, you have an eye for a composition. He goes to the house and he takes a camera and the camera is one of those cameras that you look into the lens, you know, into, into the, the viewer. Down from and, the top. Yeah. Yeah. Down from the top. And, and he put a film in it and he said, go shoot some pictures. So I went and start, you know, I shot the pictures and give it to him. He paid for it, for it to go to the lab. And, and so he encouraged me. And meanwhile, there is a movie theater open next to us, next to the, to, to the shop. And the smallest movie theater, very, very small, maybe 100 C. And the owner will bring his shoes to us. You know, I'll shine his shoes. He'd fix his shoes for free. So he allowed me to go and see the movies anytime I want. I'll walk in in the middle of the movie at the beginning, you know, right after school. So from 11 to 12, 13, 14, I saw probably one movie I've seen 20 times, 30 times, 40 times. You know, I spend my time in the movie. And they only bought like one movie every three weeks or, you know, so I saw, you know, Humphrey Bogart, I saw John Wayne, I saw Tarzan, I saw Hercules. So it was like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. So, so all this comes together because of this kind man who decided, you know what, I'll pay attention to this kid. Wow. Wow. And then, then he helped me, you know, get a visa to get to, to come to the U.S., you know, wrote, wrote for a college, any college. And, uh, and the only place I could, because I didn't have a lot of money, I didn't know anything, it was Palatka, Florida, St. John College in Palatka, Florida. They sent me an application. Went to the embassy, of course, and the embassy, they have no reason, they have all the reasons not to give me, you know, my visa. I wasn't rich. They didn't know if I was going to be a liability on the government here. I only had $400 to take with me in there. And this woman looked at me and she really liked me. And I remember she was so kind also. And she stamped the, the, the visa. So now I'm coming, I'm coming to <laughs> Florida. <laughs> and what were you going to study? Art or? Well, I couldn't tell my dad, I really want to study movies, you know, movie. I want to be a producer. I want to, I want to study, but you know, my dad said, what are you going to do and study? I said, several engineers. I said, you know, I want to build things, you know? And he said, okay, okay. And I said, this is the only place that, and I showed him a little article that uh, I looked in the newspaper in Arabic, of course it was, and he couldn't read, but I'm reading it to him that even the construction workers makes like $6 an hour, $7 an hour. That's a lot of money. That's what we make in a month. You know, you know, some you know, guys working there. And uh, he said, I said, I want to make $6 an hour, $7 an hour one day. You know, and he said, okay, so go. So I went and the night before I was panicking. I said, wait a minute, I'm going to the U.S. I'm looking at this map. I said, well, how the map, how is the, the, the plane is, is, no, I'm going to go to that city, to Florida. How would they know that? They're probably going to drop me in New York if that's it. How would they know that? So I went to, to New York, obviously, and, and the guy ripped me off. He took like $20 from my money. He didn't give me the change. It was, should have been maybe 2 $3. Okay, then for took that a bus. Cab, you mean, or for, for the cab? Yeah, the, the, the cab going from one airport airport to the other. Uh, uh. Know, it was a different airport I was going, and then ended up uh, staying, spending the night in in, in in New York. Next day, I took the plane 
to Jacksonville. Jacksonville, I took the the uh, the bus to to Palatka. You know, I arrived on the weekend. It was like a ghost town. Nobody was there. You know, it was it was really uh, it was really something. Of course, I and and you didn't know a single person, right? You're just I knew I knew I knew one person in Palatka that my neighbor had gone there. Same thing. That that so was really a, a, uh, an easy city to go to, an easy college to go to, and uh, I didn't see him till like a week later because he was working in Jacksonville. And uh, so I paid two hundred seventy-five dollars. I paid so I only have like eighty, ninety dollars left, and I have no, no, uh, no desire to to learn anything except I kept thinking I'm going to run out of money. I'm going to run out of money. I'm going to run out of money. And Wait, the town what, is, what did you spend the two hundred seventy-five on for the college paid for the oh, dorms? Oh, oh. And what about and where were you going to live? Uh, in the dorm, that's included oh, oh. in the dorm. In the wow, that so, boy, college was cheap back then. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, but 50, 50, 50 years ago, yeah, it was that much. So, uh, so I met my, you know, roommate, you know, an American blonde, blonde hair, blue eye. You know, his name was Steve, and uh, I, I didn't understand literally a word of English, and I was supposed to go oh, to the couldn't English. Speak English. Didn't speak, no, I did not speak oh English at God. all. Oh, my God. At all. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just amazing. You flew over here to this country yeah. where you knew this one person and didn't even speak the language. Not speak the language. I mean, a few words here and there, but did not speak the language. But I really, uh, you know, I'm pivoting into something else. I really think that the talent that God gave me, I don't know, is it my face, the way I talk, whatever, that people really wanted to help me. For some reason, people helped me along the way. You know, yeah. like my roommate helped me, you know, the teacher helped me a little bit. And then finally, I was eating, I bought a pot and I bought a stove. You're not supposed to have anything like this in the, in the, in the, in the, in the dorm. But I, I, I remember getting hot dogs, and eggs. So I boiled eggs and hot dogs in the same pot and, and the loaf of the American, you know, white bread, which is, I hate it. I hated that bread. <laughs> 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 and back then they didn't have like a selection of breads you can buy, you know, no pita bread, of course, no, no really good bread. It was just white bread and, and, it, and it, it was terrible. So I was eating that you know, and, and start to look for a job, go on Main Street. It was like a tailor shop. It was, uh, you know, a gas station. It was, but, but nobody would hire me for, to do anything. And I was going to run out of money. So I told my friend, I said, you know, uh, I said, I'm going to run out of money. I got to, I got to leave here. There's no jobs here. And he said, you know, you need to go to Gainesville. You know, Gainesville you is where you Gainesville, Florida. Oh, okay. it's, it's only an hour away an hour, an hour and a half away, whatever. And I I went to Gainesville, packed my suitcase and went to Gainesville and it was dropped at, uh, in like, in, 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 you know, walking to the street with me. He said, go next to the, to the university. You probably can meet somebody who can speak Arabic and help you. Went to McDonald's and sure enough, it was three people speaking Arabic. Wow. And I asked... Uh, you know, I told them, you know, what I am, what's going on, and I need I need help to find a place to live. And the one guy is a Palestinian. I spoke to him, still speak to him. His name Brahim Jordan. And he said, I'll put you up for a few days. So he took me to his apartment. And he put me up for like a week. And uh, the other guy I, I met at McDonald's, he was working at a place called... Uh, uh, Coffee King, and he said, you know, you know, let me take you there. Maybe they can use you. And I went there, and they gave me a job as a busboy, and I was making a, a dollar thirty-five an hour, and I was like, felt like, you know, man, this is great. 
So I worked there. And then it was another, uh, I needed another job. They only gave me like three days. I got another job somewhere else as a dishwasher. And then the same guy told me they're opening a steakhouse, new steakhouse. And they're looking for people. Maybe you should go there. So I went there and they said they were paying 145 an hour as, as a dishwasher. And I said, okay, great. So that was my full-time job. Now I went from part-time to different places to a full-time six days a week. And so you weren't going to school then if you're working. Right. I did not, I did not go to school. I did not wow. go to school. I took you know, the first two or three months, two months in Palatka, I think. Went to classes, and uh, then it was really funny. I went, I said, you know, they understood from me that I really wanted to be a producer, and they said there's a production uh, uh, class. That I said, okay, great. So I went and sat in it, and they were talking about the history of the cinema, which is I didn't understand the goddamn word. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I left that class very quickly, you know. When, especially when I looked at the book, I was like three hundred pages, four hundred pages. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> so, so went, uh, you know, I dove on to working, working very, very, very hard. Uh, within six months, I was went to like sixty five dollars, one sixty five an hour, to one eighty five an hour because. I was a dishwasher. I wasn't the busboy. I was a dishwasher, but I will wash the dishes so fast, and I'll go out and help the busboy, you know. And I'll bring him. And the assistant director at the time, an assistant director, assistant manager, his name is David, the night manager. He said, "What are you doing in the, in the, in the dining room?" It was a huge place, and you know, he, you know. I said, "He said, do go wash the dishes." I said, "They're all washed," you know. Start learning English, and uh, so he comes back to the dish dishwasher place and he sees all the dishes are washed stack and I'm running helping the guy with the with the so he said oh my god and then across the room from the dishwasher so across is where we cut the meat so the meat comes in like 20 30 40 pounds pieces of meat and they they they, they have a saw it's this machine that you they cut it and it's now it's New York steak and it's this and then we grind hamburger and the, the room is like 55 degrees and at the end of the day they, they bring all the meat and they cut it. It was a huge steakhouse. It was like uh, like two times, three times as big as Sizzler called the Chaparral Steakhouse. And uh, so the room has to be hosed down with the hot water. You know, so the guy is black, big guy, he was host, you know, hosing it. And I have nothing to do. He goes, hey, come and help me. So I went and start hosing the, 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 the room. And then I start hosing it every day. So again, the, the assistant manager will walk by and go, what the hell are you doing? You know, you're supposed to do the dishes. I say, well, everything is done. So I come in the morning one day and he sees me. I'm cutting the meat with this guy, you know, <laughs> you know. And, and I'm putting, you know, we, we marinate it and we put it in trays and we put it in, you know, and, and, and uh, so two, three days later, he didn't say anything. He was really friendly to me now. He's seeing me, how hard I work. And, you know, he will say, can you stay an extra two hours, five hours? Okay. And I, and I, I'll say, I stay any, any, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever. So now he had me come like at seven in the morning, set up the line but, you know, but uh, everything they need for the lettuce, the tomatoes, the, you know, mop the floor. Now I'm working 10, 12 hours a day, which is good. I'm making money. I'm happy. And uh, so one day he said to me, listen, this guy forgot his name. The guy who cut the meat, he didn't show up because I saw you cut the meat. You know how to cut the meat? I said, yeah, I know how to cut the meat. So, you know, he put an apron on himself and he started cutting the meat and I started helping him. All of a sudden, I be became the meat cutter. I'm making two dollars an hour. Uh, okay, <laughs> moving up you know, in this, the world. Yeah. Six months into this, I'm making two dollars. Now I have the keys to the restaurant to come in the morning <laughs> to cut the meat, and now the owners, you know, meet me, and they, he tells them about me like I'm a great worker. Da, 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 da. Then they made me an assistant manager, where I make a thousand dollars a month. Oh wow! Okay. And, and now this, but this process took how long? By now it's about a year. Yeah. 
I wait, but I just want to back up for a second because there was a story when you first got there, you were eating the hot dogs and the eggs where a guy told you about tuna. Oh yeah. 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 So, so uh, yeah. One of the guys told me, I told him that all I eat, ate, my budget was, was, was a dollar a day to eat the eggs. And he goes, you know, they have tuna. It's on sale for nine cents. Once you get some of the tuna, I went yesterday and got a hundred can. I'm going to go back today and get a hundred can for $9. I said, please show me where the place is. So he took me to the supermarket and we walk in and sure enough, this can of tuna for this nine, nine cents. And he got a huge cart and he's putting all, all he's emptying the shelves. And I said, wait a minute. I said, why there is a picture of a cat on it? You know? <laughs> I don't know. I said, maybe this is for the cats. He goes, no, no, it's tuna. It says tuna. Look, T, tuna. I said, I said, okay. I said, so we start asking the lady. He spoke just as bad English as I did. Literally, we were making the sound of a meow. Instead of this for cat. Yes, it's for cat. Food for cat. <laughs> oh, so you didn't actually eat any. He was the only one who had been eating it. He was eating he was eating it, and, and I told him, I don't know if I can eat the damn thing. He said, it's really good. And he didn't put them back. He bought them. Wow. He bought them. No, it's, it's for cat. But later on, we learned that, that the, the, the laws of making uh, cat food or pet foods, that it has to be edible for humans, just in case, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, they, you know, so it's edible. Huh. So I didn't, I didn't eat it, but yeah, he did eat it. So now, no, I moved to a you know, regular apartment, uh, had my first girlfriend, I went on my first date, which was you know, a waitress who worked there, you know, and, wow. uh, and it, was, it, was, uh, it was, everything was, was going well. And now I decided, you know what, after I worked for, for about maybe a year and a half now, they trusted me with the, with the, he trusted me with now I'm doing the paperwork where I'm doing the deposits, my deposits. And then I said, you know, I got to go back to school. I need, I need to go back to school. And, uh, and they weren't really happy, but they loved me. You know? And they gave me a recommendation. I said, they said, oh, but you still have to work. I said, yeah, I can work. But there's a place called 12 East. They just opened. Some of the people I know, they work there as waiters at night and they make like 15, 40, 50 dollars, you know, in tips. It was a very, very high end, you know, place. And I said, I want to get a job and as a bus boy. Maybe one day I'll be a waiter. And the guy says, I know the, the owners. You want to work there? We'll make you. Yeah, so the guy called the owners and he said, you gotta, you gotta get the best guy there is. And so the guy, I went there and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be, you know, a waiter, but I understand you have to work as a bus boy first. And he looked at me. He said, come with me. He put me in the car, went to a clothing shop and bought me two tuxedos. Wow. Two tuxedos. He goes, you're going to be the assistant maitre d'. You're going to see people. You have the personality to see people, to talk to people. That's what you're going to be. And I went there and all my friends thought, you know, I'll be lucky to get a job as, you know, they were more, you know, they were in this country for five, six years. They were waiters, they were seasoned, and uh, they said, and now I'm, all of a sudden I'm their boss. <laughs> I'm there today. I'm there today. <laughs> so, and, and the Mater D himself, he was a very, he didn't like the idea at all. This kid who does not speak English well, speak very little English, you know, just because I was like 21 years old now, you know. And uh, so I had this tuxedo, and I'm sitting people. Now, the place was a, was a warehouse. So the very first thing he said to me, he said, you know, a lot of tourists comes in here. They ask, what was this place? It was like massive, 20,000 square feet, you know, band, different restaurants and bars. And, and uh, he said, you know, this place was a warehouse. So you tell him, you know, people will ask, what was this place before? And I thought he said a whorehouse. <laughs> So, so I will see people in, and they'll say, hey, what was this place before? And I said, a whorehouse. And they would laugh. And say, <laughs> well, what was this place before? I said, a whorehouse. 
I said, okay, they laugh and sit down. So one time he overheard me. He goes, it's a, it's a warehouse, you dumb ass, not a whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> the major thing. Oh Richard, his name is Richard. So then I walked by, the guy hated me. The major lead, he just hated me. I was young, I was bubbly, I was happy, I was, I'll do whatever it takes. And then, uh, and, uh, of course, the first time somebody gave me $5,000, $5 $5 $5 they gave me a tip. I see to them and I didn't know what the hell, why they're giving me the money, $5. You know, you know, so then I learned people would tip you. So I seated some people and the guy grabbed me and goes, Get me a screwdriver. I said, <laughs> and I, I, I went to the t- table and I pushed on the table. I said, there's nothing wrong with the table. And he started laughing. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm funny. Okay. So I walk around <laughs> back. I walk by again. He goes, where's my screwdriver? I said, you really need a screwdriver? He goes, yes. So I went to the Mentor B and I said, listen, this guy asked for a screwdriver. There's nothing wrong with the table. It's not shaking or anything. It's a drink, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, you, you, the, how did you get from minute, Florida? One, oh, yeah, go wait, ahead. What, what, what the best one is when a girl said to me, can I have sex on the beach? No. Yeah. Well, it's a drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, What? <laughs> and first is like I love this country and second thought <laughs> I need to learn how to swim man <laughs> oh man so okay you're, ta- you're talking about taking a chance now I have a girlfriend uh, doing really really well I quit my first job to go to school I took some courses some English courses now two years two and a half years passes I said, I got to make movies. And I just put all, every, everything in the car, moved to Hollywood, wanted to get to Hollywood. And again, you don't know anybody? I know, I know, I know. I knew one person in Hollywood. I knew one person in Los Angeles. I have learned about different people to introduce me to. And uh, I called him and I told him I'm going to come down. He said, okay, come down. And I drove to Hollywood. So you're talking about life is a gamble. Every time I was comfortable, I was very, very comfortable. I was working in this beautiful you know, place, and now I have a place to live, and I have a nice you know, life. I have a good car, and moved, moved. And now I was in this place, which is very tempting to stay there 20 years, 30 years, buy a house, you know, very tempting. I got to get to Hollywood. So I went to Hollywood, got in the car one day, packed everything, Left the girl behind? Left the girl behind. Wow. She followed me. She followed me back to Hollywood, actually. Uh, left everything and uh, went to, drove to Hollywood. Now I'm in Hollywood and I arrived like midnight and I told the guy, please take me, take me, show me Hollywood, show me Hollywood. So he's taking me. He said, okay, he got me in the car. It's, uh, the, he, he was living on Rampart and near Vermont, you know, really bad area. Uh, I was staying with him for the first day or two, and I got a room. I got an uh, apartment in the same room. But the same night I arrived, it was like a midnight, and I said, "Take me, take me. I want to see Hollywood. I want to see how." So he's taking me. He's driving, and he's talking. And we're talking, 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 talking. And I said, "Take me to Hollywood." He said, "You are in Hollywood." And he's taking me up and down Hollywood Boulevard, and all you see is, is hookers and, and pimps and, and dirty and. This thing. I said, no, this is not Hollywood. He said, yeah, this is Hollywood. <laughs> so <laughs> it was very disappointing the first you know, impression of, of Hollywood. And now, okay, I the same guy, he got me a job as 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 in the bakery, Peter, Peter Brett, you know, we started working on, 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 on in the bakery and uh, as as a driver uh, delivering bread. Uh, with him, we'll go with him and start taking bread and start talking to different markets like Ralph supermarket or ba- market basket. People didn't, did not know Peter Bread. We introduced the Peter Bread, we introduced the Baklava, we introduced all these people to open routes for these supermarkets. Uh, and then again, you know, a year of that and I quit. You know, I 
again, I quit. I needed to do something else. Meanwhile, I went to LACC. I registered at LACC to take some film film productions, you know. And uh, but I, I I couldn't make it. I did not. I, you know, I found out that the apartment building I was in. I got friendly with the manager, and uh, and finally I said to him, I, I can't make it here. Man. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm just like throwing in the towel. I can't save enough money. The rent is too expensive. LA is expensive. It was smoggy back then. This is 1975, I would say now. Yeah, three years later now, 75. And uh, traffic, LACC, I wasn't getting, I, I was I was miserable. And I said, he said, you, you know, you need to go someplace. You want to save money? You need to go to someplace like Vegas. So, what's Vegas? He tells me, he gave me the route, how to get there. I packed my clothes. That was the most difficult move I've ever made. Because you didn't know anybody there. I didn't know anybody. Nobody, zero. I didn't know anybody. But it was comfortable here. I knew now enough people. I'm going to school. I have a routine. I'm working in a place that I like. They're all Arabs and pita bread. And it was it was a very comfortable situation. But I realized I can live nicely, you know, get by, but I'm never going to get ahead. And when you were going to do this, um, like, I mean, did you just feel like I'll always be able to find work, I'll find somewhere to stay, and I'll be able to get a job somewhere? Or Much. I remember vividly. The minute I remember standing outside, outside it, it was I was living on the third floor, looking over the street. Which is, first of all, every time you come home, you, you get up, you got circle two, three blocks to find a parking. That's one. Okay, it was approximately noon. It was raining, and Paul Anka's song saying, "Having my baby, what a lovely way to say I love you." Whatever that song is. I remember it like it was yesterday and decided after the guy told me about Vegas and I started packing my clothes. I went down, put everything, said, I'm going to Vegas, man. Here's the key. And he said, good luck. And I went, that's it. And I went to Vegas and I drove to Vegas. The very first stop, they were remodeling the Aladdin Hotel. It was only like six story. And they had a buffet. It was like $1.49 or something. I went in there, and I. The reason it's Aladdin is Arab, you know. It's 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 it's, it's an Arab <laughs> word, you know. And I went in there, and uh, I stuffed myself, you know, with all the food, and then we went down uh, Las Vegas Boulevard all the way till till the the strip ended at the Sahara. Now, I could have made a left turn; my life would have been different. But I made a right turn. And I went the second street after Paradise is Van Patten. And it says apartment for rent. I went, made the right and went in there and rented an apartment. And rented the apartment. And the manager was a lady about 50, 55. I said, listen, I just moved here from LA. She's asking me for reference. She's asking me for an application. I said, I don't have anything. I have enough money, $500, $600. And my rent was, I think, 70, maybe $60, $50, whatever, uh, a month. Wow, yeah, that one was cheap. Yeah, one bedroom has, has like 22 units with a pool inside of it in, in the middle of it. And she told me, well, what's your qualification? I said, I work in the restaurant. You know, She said, okay, you have to go and register at the culinary union. You know, That's the only way you're going to get a job. And I said, but I want another job. I want to be a dealer. So I can, she said, okay, you're going to go to dealer school. And she looked into the, again, another person who really helped me. Anybody else will say, no, you know, whatever, but she helped. And uh, so I went to both. I went to the culinary union and registered. And then I went to uh, the, the, the dealing school and they asked for, I think, $200 or $150 for six weeks, they said. Anyway, and then, uh, but I needed a job right away. So I kept the driving, stopping at 7-Eleven. I said, I'll be a cashier in one of the 7-Eleven on Boulder Highway in Sahara. 
actually used to be a 7-Eleven in there. They hired me. You make a right on Sahara from Boulder Highway. It's on the left-hand side of Aramar. And it was brand new 7-Eleven, and they hired me to work a graveyard shift. It was working, you know, open 24 hours a day. So that's how it started. And then I kept going back to the culinary. I said, I want to get a better job. And, you know, for dealers, I finished dealing school. And uh, then I got a job as a room service waiter at the the Starbucks Hotel. Starbucks Hotel, room service waiter, you know, the night shift. And I was working 7-Eleven during the day. It suits me to the to the day and then it was another hotel uh small small little casino uh on boulder highway called sky sky skyline yeah skyline skyline yeah so they hired me as a, as a dealer 21 they, they didn't make any money i wanted to break into the to the to the casinos so i got very very friendly in at the Stardust hotel i started you know the city of start but we were doing really really good on tips in the room service. We were doing really, really good. And they, uh, I, I was working at the graveyard 11 to seven, and you get all these people, you know, drunk at the end of the night, and, you know, and they you know, tip you, get some food, get some drinks, whatever. And uh, then Frank Rosenthal, remember the movie? The you know, movie Casino, Casino. Yeah. 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 He was my boss, he was the food and beverage manager. And I used to take care of Frank Rosenthal. He used to always take a sugar up at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, whatever. He would call for champagne. He would call for food. As a matter of fact, the, the Stardust Hotel had five or six restaurants. And one of them will stay open just for Frank because he wants to eat something. So it would close at 11.30 and then 12 o'clock. And if they knew was, he's going to eat something, they'll say something. Yeah, they'll leave a, you know, the kitchen open for him. And sure enough, I'll go and get food for him. And he's the first guy who gave me twenty dollars tip. Twenty. I didn't know who he is. I knew he was he, he was important in in the, in the hotel, but I didn't know he was a mobster. I didn't know who. He was. But I knew I was working for a play, for a mobster joint because one of the uh, one of the uh, guards, security guard, grabbed a hooker. And then from the second floor, the Stardust had a high rise of about eight story building, and they have all these bungalows, you know, uh, you know, can you can walk up one two story, one on the for, first the ground, then you walk up to the second ground. And he threw a hooker from the railing from out, you know, from wow. from the second floor right into the top of a car. And the police came and the and and they didn't even take a report. They just, and then I knew yeah. something. Yeah, they're really connected. These guys, like with law and order, and and uh, so nobody could follow. Not quote them. And they were really, Did you um, uh, have any interaction with Spalatro at all? No, but I, I, I heard by the time he was murdered. I was, I had my own pizza place because he, I think they caught him with, it was a submarine sandwich or something. He had a submarine sandwich. Or he was coming out of a sub place or something when huh. he got shot. Yeah. Well, no, uh, Spilotro, um, they found his, him and his brother's bodies in Indiana. No, uh, I'm, I'm, no. no. was one I've of the other guys been. who got shot uh, yeah. <laughs> coming yeah. out with the yeah. sandwich, I think. Yes, uh, no. I mean, I never met him. Yeah. I, uh, and, but I did get to know Frank uh, Rosenthal because I was interested in the movie business. I was interested in the TV business. And then he had his own, he became the entertainment director of the, the hotel. They would yeah. give him different, he was the, the food and beverage manager. He was the, you know, so when, then he had his own show. So when I delivered this bottle of champagne, he would always order a bottle of champagne first before he gets food. And then I said, you know, Mr. Rosenthal, you know, I'm really, you know, and I saw him, you know, taping a show. I said, I'm really interested in the film business. And I really, is, is there anything I can do to help with the production? And he said, yeah, let me introduce you to this guy. Maybe you can help him, you know. And they were shooting on, on video, videos, you know, new, you know, so... 
So, you know, I, you know, I said, if anything can help, I said, yeah, there's nothing for you to do. And, uh, but I will watch, I will watch them take the show. You know, I was very interested in it. So now I bought a house for, on Charleston and Sunrise, which is like Charleston and Boulder Highway for $27,500. I put $2,500 down and my payment was $170. I got a brand new Pontiac from, from Sahara on Sahara. That Pontiac actually, we, we own a piece of it now, you know, the, that dealership that my brother bought uh, the Cadillac dealership. And, uh, so anyway, to make a long story short, now I'm really flying high. I have a couple of jobs, uh, have a house, three bedroom, two bath, living the American dream practically. And then I went to, my girlfriend was from, you know, Maryland. We went for Christmas to see her parents. It was snowing, six feet of snow everywhere. It was horrible winter they had. The only thing was open was a pizzeria. And I used to go to that pizzeria every day. We stayed there for five, six days. And after the first day, I said, you know, there's nothing, very quiet. You, you don't hear anything. No street, no, no street noise, no cars, snow. Just everybody can just walk in and get a pizza. And I started, I said, can I help you making the dough? He was making the dough. Then I started making the dough with this guy. Then I started cooking with him a little bit. I had nothing to do. After three, four days, five days, I thought, I'm opening a pizzeria in Las Vegas. I went back home, went to Vegas, sold my house, quit my job, and wow. opened a pizzeria. Okay. What you need? You needed the money from selling the house in order to open it. Is yes. that why yes. you sold the house? Yes, yes. I sold wow. the house. Yeah. And again, a, a big risk. Did you <clears throat> did you think like, what if it doesn't work? I'll go broke, or did, did that enter your mind at all? Of course it did. Uh, first of all, when I gave my notice at the hotel, two of the guys who were room service waiter, what, what, one is Don, he was, he was Donnie, he's an Italian guy. Another one is totally American, his name is Keith, both of which are around 50, 55, 60 years old, whatever. They said, kid, are you crazy? This is, this is the union job, you're making good money. What do you know about opening a business? Are you nuts? Are you crazy? And I'm looking at these guys and like, okay, they've been here 20 years. That's not what I want to be, you know? No, it was, it was a reason for me to keep going forward. Of course, Mission Center is Maryland Parkway and Flamingo. Well, you've been to my pizzeria. Oh, course, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I loved your lasagna. Yeah. I used to <laughs> eat there all the time. Yeah. So they gave me the, the worst location you know, because I didn't have any credit, didn't know any, any better. It was the last one on, on the shopping center. The worst across the street from it is Nevada Bank with the drive through And uh, so, you know, it's, you can't see it from the street practically. You can see it, you know. So, so I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about opening a business, owning a business, nothing. All I knew is... I want to make money. The only way to do it is you, you need to go on your own. You can and, and the plan was always, I want to make money so that I can save enough money to go to LA and be in the movie business. It's exactly the plan is, is one day I want to make movies and there's, you know, now I was comfortable. I own the house and I also, I got lucky. That's the only time the cycle of real estate in Las Vegas, grew, you know, went up. You know, when I caught it in the right time, two, three years, the house is worth twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars more. Ah. So I sold it for fifty-five thousand from twenty-seven five to fifty thousand. But I had spent two, three thousand dollars on it. I did the backyard. I did some, you know, some tiling. I did some some work on it. So now I took the money from that and put it in the business. About a week before it opened, at three o'clock in the morning. I went in there and they had just had put the sign. I want to see the sign there. And I saw the sign and you know, the, the pizzeria, you know, the parking lot. And I sat there and literally start crying and thinking, what the fuck did you do? You idiot. Everybody knows where to go to lunch every day. They already know they have their places. Where am I going to get a hundred people to break even every day? Is that what you felt like you needed? You needed a hundred a day to break even? A yeah, hundred people to, 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 
you know, at least I need to do two, three hundred dollars a day, you know, to because the pizza was a dollar seventy five at the time when I first opened. It was a dollar seventy five. <laughs> Is that a slice or is that a whole pizza? No, the whole pizza. The whole oh pizza was hundred. It's a buck seventy-five for ten yeah. inch. One seventy-five for ten inch. Medium was two seventy-five, and large was three seventy-five. And how did you even know how to cook everything? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you had helped that guy for a couple of days, and again, when you were helping that guy, you didn't know him or anything. You were just like, "Hey, I'm bored. Can I help you?" Yeah, I was the only one in the pizzeria. I was the only one. I started talking to him. Where are you from? Da, da, da. I started talking, talking, talking. said, yeah, I'm bored. Can I help you do this? Wow. He said, okay. So he said, I worked in a restaurant before, you know, and he started talking and he's just showing me. And all of a sudden I know, you know, you know how to do it. But when I went back, uh, I the only pizza, it was, it was in Las Vegas at the time, Munch. It was uh, uh, Pizza Hut. It was... Uh, What's the other chain? Uh, it wasn't that many small little pizzerias, except for Villa Pizza in the commercial center. And Tower of Pizza on the Strip. Tower, Tower of Pizza on the Strip. Villa Pizza, I went, I had the pizza, and I said, wow, this is a really good pizza. So, uh, so I, you know, I went there at the end of the day, at the end of the night, and this guy was, you know, the guy who made the pizza, and... Uh, I said, listen, I said, uh, uh, how, how many days a week you work here? So he told me, I said, I said how much you're making an hour? He said, why? I said, well, I'm opening pizzeria. I need somebody to help me. He said, I make, uh, I think, 165 an hour, he told me. I said, if I pay you $2 an hour, will you come and work for me a couple of days a week? He said, okay. So I went in there. And uh, he said, okay, so what's your recipe? I said, well, you know, my recipe... <laughs> <laughs> How do you want to make the dough? You know, is it, do you have your own stuff? I said, yeah, I do, but I want to see your recipe first, just in case I like your. <laughs> so, so he said, well, the way we do it in Villa Pizza, we put this, 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 this. And he said, oh, okay, this is great. Well, what about the sauce? What do you put in the sauce? I said, well, what do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> so he taught me how to make pizzas. He opened the pizza for me. He opened the pizzeria for me. You know, wow. I was paying him two dollars, and I started giving him two twenty-five dollars an hour. Then I learned it very quickly, and I was, you know, really good at uh, with the customers. You know, you know, yeah. I worked the register, and and, uh, and we decorated it with movie posters, and you know, remember, you know, oh, yeah, had, yeah, I remember. It was it. a lot, a lot of the movies and so on. Now I bought my house. I sold my house, of course, went to open a pizzeria. I bought sixty-five thousand dollars home by the airport, you know, on right off uh, Easter, you know, four bedroom, two bath, pool. I got a brand new car, Pontiac, you know, now. And now so the business top took of off right away. You, you took off immediately. Took wow. off immediately. For marketing, that's another, you know, credit I really want to give myself to. Back then you can buy, you know, ad on TV, channel five and so on for, you know, $100 a spot, $50 a spot, you can buy an ad. And I had $1,000 for marketing. And I said, you know what? We're talking about newspaper. We're talking. And I said, you know what? The pizza cost me a dollar to make. I want to make a thousand. I have a thousand dollars. I want to make a thousand pizzas and give it away. If I could, you know, because I believed in the pizza. I believed in it. So I made a thousand, literally a thousand pizzas. And I, I took it, took them around and just gave them to, to people. And all of a sudden, you know, they took, took off. What, and then where did you, you take them to give to people? Gas stations, go to the apartment building, anybody, knock on the apartment, here's a pizza. Knock on the apartment, here's a pizza. Wow. Anybody who answered the door, anybody who answered the door, you know, there's a flyer. We just opened a pizzeria. Here you go, sir. Da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden, you know, start people start, uh, you know, coming in, you know. Wow. You know. So it was, it was, then we opened a second one, you know, and then later on we opened a second pizzeria. But anyway, that went on where I totally forgot, you know, moving back to L.A. for now, just put it in the back burner. And then I learned about the acting school, you know, where I met you. Right. So I don't know who, I think it was Pam, Pam Dixon, 
who told me about the acting school. I started dating Pam and, uh, and then uh, went to the acting school just because I was curious about the film industry and the film business and so on. Liked it, met you, met you know, Jerry Tiffy, met Lee Shell, met uh, you know, all these people, we became friends. And uh, then I brought my brother from Syria, Gus, he, he came. And uh, somebody from Los Angeles actually came that I met in Los Angeles and told me he was editing a movie in, in, in Los Angeles. And I said, shit, that's what I want to do. And that's again when I just pack again and left everything to Gus and went to Glendale, remember my apartment in Glendale. Yeah, we both moved to, uh, we moved to LA at about the same time. I think you got there maybe a month before me. And yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, we both had the same plan, make a bunch of money in Vegas, move to LA and get into the movie business. Yeah, so again, went back to the movies, you know, went to make movies and the rest is history. Well, uh, okay, so um, I'm actually, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to split this episode into two parts, and then the second part will be going to L.A. Okay. Well, there you have it. That is the end of part one of my interview with the incredible story of Joseph Mirhi. Uh Come back next time for part two, where we will talk about Joe going to L.A. and getting into the movie business. If you can, leave a review, rate the show. Uh, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at lifeisagamblepod at gmail.com or I'm on Twitter at rwm21. Until next time.